Today, I'm joined by Todd Gaspard, and we're gonna talk about how he bought a triplex direct to seller. He'd tried kind of the typical MLS route for about a year without much luck. This is a really neat story because he's got a very advanced day job, and he also was able to get the property on seller financing. Let's hop right in. You know, kind of 2019, 2020, you'd been trying to find, um, well, investment properties and weren't really having much Correct. luck. And then you said in June was kind of when you started to go direct to seller? Uh, yes. After joining uh, this group, uh, okay, I'm going to switch gears. I'm going to go direct to seller. And again, Brian, I'm not doing this full time. I, I, I do have a day job. What, what's, your, uh, what's your nine to five for people watching this? Uh, my, my nine to five job is uh, working as an engineer for NASA. Um, so it's an incredible job. I love my job um, and I, I wouldn't give it up for anything. But uh, I'm a little older, I'm getting closer to retirement and also I would like to continue investment properties after retirement okay. is my plan. Cool. But yeah, I was uh, could not find any, uh, like I said, I couldn't find any uh, properties after looking at, at hundreds of them. And uh, started direct to seller, got um, pretty much learned uh, where to pull a list, got the list, uh, made my first order of a little less than 2,000 mailers, uh, dropped that. I'm going to shamelessly plug my own company. Who'd you get your mail from? <laughs> uh, ballpoint Marketing. All right, there you go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and... Um, uh, I pretty much dropped 500 a week, um, and uh, the very first week, I uh, yeah, well, I've got a uh, response. Uh, I think my market might be a little bit more competitive. My response rate is a little bit less than the 1% target that you say we should shoot for. Okay. Uh, so it's a little bit less, but, not, but even with that, uh, Worked those uh, leads, uh, and one was was very promising. It wound up being uh, a, for a triplex, um, uh, only five miles from my house. Nice. It wasn't wasn't far at all. Um, and uh, I pretty much uh, talked to this couple, to an older couple. This was their only investment property. They've had this property for 16 years, and uh, they really took very well care of the property and made lots of upgrades and siding and air conditioners, roofs, changed the plumbing. It's an older house, but looking at the pictures, you couldn't tell it's an older house. I mean, it's really nice. Yeah, it's, it's a like there was some pride of ownership. Yes, very much so. I walked the house with the with the, the older gentleman and he's pointing to a ceiling fan and he says, white is light. And I was confused. What does that mean? White is light. He went and he put a white hanger on each ceiling fan to show the tenants. You grab the white light and the white uh, hanger to turn on the light versus the other ones for the fan. So like he was the very little, like, detailed. Knob thing? The little knob thing, right. Okay. He was very detailed I and mean, he had a lot of pride of ownership of that place. So pretty much uh, I, I, I the most important thing is to have a good rapport. I had a good rapport with uh, this, this older couple, uh, gave them a cash offer, um, you know, and, and you know, there, there was a little difference there. We were probably about $35,000 spread between what I offered and they wanted. Okay. And that was a cash offer you said? That was a cash offer. Like we usually, um, you know, that's usually what we give is cash offers. Um, negotiated a little bit and there was a little bit of a stalemate and that's fine um he had a nice property i had a feeling if he had put this on the mls he could have got a lot more that's that's normally how that goes <laughs> exactly i knew he could get a lot more anyway uh but then i offered uh i offered up uh what about seller financing you know would he be open to seller financing and i told him the pros and cons of seller fund financing um, pretty much, you know, I have excellent credit. Uh, I can give a significant down payment, uh, etc. And he and turned out he was very open to seller financing. Um, 
Uh, he started at uh, six percent, and and once I showed him the numbers, I, I told him, sir, these numbers wouldn't work for me. I'd be underwater on day one. Mm -hmm. um, and and being in his position for 16 years, after looking at the numbers, he knew I was right. He said, yeah, you're right. Uh, okay, let's go down. And I was, I was thinking more like 3%. And uh, they talked about it a while, maybe the following day, and they agreed to the terms 3%. And keeping my lower price about thirty-five thousand less than what they were wanted for the property. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, let me make sure you got that straight. So you got your, your the price you wanted to pay, you got it for. I never changed my price. Correct. To and hit my number. You got it. Seller financed at three percent interest. Yes. I mean that's a pretty good deal. I don't think I was aware that that you didn't even come up on price because that's normally what we'll do is I can't pay that much in cash, but I could maybe pay a little bit more in terms. Right. So yes, I didn't raise the price at all. Uh, what I pretty much showed him, this would be your monthly cash flow. If we add up the, that monthly cash flow for 15 years, this is your, this is what you're really getting, which is a lot even more than what you know you want now. It's over the 15 year, you know, term. Yeah. Of course. But uh, he really liked the idea of that and seller financing, and unbeknownst to me, um, I. I didn't know this, but he told me that he had uh, bought the property with seller financing. So he was Interesting. Um, aware of what seller financing was. So it wasn't too hard of a sale. I still had to sell it a little bit, but it wasn't as hard of a sell. No, but it probably kind of felt good for him, almost like he was handing the property down to you, like somebody kind of gave it to him. So I, yeah, it seems and like he probably kind of liked that. And at that stage in his life, he was, this was a couple in their 70s. Um, and uh, they, they, they maintained it themselves. They would go out every other week and cut the grass themselves. They maintained the property themselves. And he realized he can't continue to do that anymore. Yeah. And therefore, it was time to let it go. And he was looking for the right person to take care of it. What a, let's just chat numbers on it real quick. What was your purchase price on it? Uh, 250. Okay. And then what's your, what's it rent for? Uh, 3000 a month. 1.2. I hit my numbers. That's awesome. Yes. And, and I'm going in with, into the property and, and the place needs nothing. It's fabulous. It, they changed all the, they even changed the insulation. Uh, I saw I saw their records. They spent thirty thousand on siding uh, like five years ago, wow. uh, and just recently put a new eight thousand dollar AC in it. Uh, we got a uh, vinyl plank uh, it, it, throughout the the homes. Uh, it, it's really in great shape. So I mean, one thing I think that you did really well on this that I think is important for people to catch who are watching this is I think investors often will try to throw like money at the problem of like. Well, we're mm -hmm. apart on price. I can't come up. You don't want to come down. So stalemate. And it sounds like you instead pivoted and kind of figured out more what they were looking for was the kind of the cash flow they'd been getting without the headache of actually doing all the work. Is that right? That is key, Ryan. Uh, I listened very well to what his spouse was saying. And she, she was saying, you know, the, the house, I mean, the, the, the triplex was paid for. So they had a good cash flow. Okay. She says, we love the cash flow. We, we just can't keep up with the property. We're older now. We just cannot keep up with the property. And so my pivot to them was, well, you can still have the cash flow. I'll still, you still have a cash flow for 15 years uh, and, and you don't have no headaches. So I pretty much solved their problem. Pardon this interruption. A couple of people have told us down in the comments that I talk too much with my hands. But if you're enjoying this video, please like as well as subscribe. We're putting a ton of effort into this channel and would love your help in helping it take off. Back to where we were. At first, he had said, well, $10,000 down, 6% um, interest. And I said, sir, um, I think you, if you don't go with me, that's fine. But I think you need to be asking more down than 10,000 because you could pay a significant uh, tax bill, you know, uh, with capital gains. And, and, you know, that first year you might be negative. I think you need a bigger thing. So I, I offered that up freely to him. Uh, I think there's, 
an advantage to giving value to, and they, they appreciate it. They told me, thank you for telling me that. What'd you end up putting you know, down? I wound up uh, putting 20% down and, and I was at a point where I needed, I needed to put from a, a previous, uh, a, a far that I had in a previous um, property, I had some, a gain that I needed to put money down. It was like a 1031 so, kind of a situation? Kind of like a 1031. So I had to put, show that money's going into a new property. Got it. Okay. Very, very interesting. Yeah. I mean, I think the neat thing though, is you could have probably got the property with $10,000 down and 3% interest. You didn't necessarily have to do, you know, $50,000 down. You just Correct. did good. Yeah, I, I had to, uh, but you're right. He was saying $10,000 and that would be a great deal also. Uh, but I offered I could give them a little bit more down. So how do you think you sold them on seller financing? Like what, why do you think they were comfortable doing that for you? Somebody like they didn't, they didn't know you. Yeah. Um, this is an older couple. I'm a, I'm a little older myself. <laughs> it's mainly, uh, uh, you know, really talking with them. I, I know their kids. You know, I know what kind of jobs they were doing, and I know she still works. They, she's run daycares, and you know, we sat on the porch. Uh, I had a uh, a company come out to check the sewer lines, which checked out fine. And while we were waiting for that, we just pretty much sat outside, uh, social distancing, and just chit chat for a good thirty minutes. You know, and just developing a good rapport. And I think we had this this connection. Uh, I, and I told them I would I would give them my credit scores, you know, that, which were over 800 credit scores, and they would be in first position on the mortgage, and they would uh, also, you know, I'm gonna get insurance uh, to have them protected. Their names are gonna be on the insurance policy. I went pretty much the whole nine yards uh, to fully protect them, and uh, it's been over a month now, and and I, I even reached out to them just a couple of days ago. Hey. I'm just checking. You did get your first month's rent. I want to make sure y'all getting it and you're going to get it for the next 15 years. And so I reached out and uh, I, I think the main thing, Ryan, is, is is rapport with people. It means so much. This is a really a people business. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you, you took the time to get to know them, which is yes. it's probably what they're looking for. You know, they wanted the property to go to somebody that was, nobody takes the kind of time to label which one's the light switch and which one's the fan if it's not a right. property they care about. So um, I, I like that. It sounds like you kind of took the time to really get to know them. And then, yeah, I mean, yeah, you had to sell them on kind of seller financing a little bit, but they probably wouldn't have sold it to you on seller financing if you just walked in, thrown a number at them and walked out either. Oh, right. You know, we started with, with the cash I and mean, we were kind of a little stalemate right there. Um, and, and, you know, once I brought up seller financing, it, it, it all turned, they were very open to the seller financing and love the fact that it'd be a consistent cash flow to them for the next 15 years. No, it's, I, I think people watching this, cause my, my gut instinct, if I'm too far apart on a cash offer is I can maybe pay you more on seller finance and I'll raise my offer a little bit and then I'll show them how much more they'd make in interest, but you didn't even have to do that. You just uh, show, right. hey, you're going to make, you know, 3% over 15 years, this much more money. So that's anybody who's watching this just because they say no to a cash offer doesn't mean it's not worth trying the same offer with terms. Right. Uh, start offering terms, look at different angles. And for this deal, it worked. So this is uh, uh, my 2000 mailers. My first deal, very happy. Um, already got my uh, next order of a, uh, close to 3,500 mailers coming in. There you go. And I'll be doing this again in January with the goal of maybe picking up some more properties on the side, working full time um, next year. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I think a lot of folks, you know, think you have to be full time or you have to have a super flexible day job. Sim similarly to you, um, I well, I don't have a day job, but I'm busy. <laughs> you know, I just had a newborn and all that. <laughs> And I've, I've been looking for a property here in Pensacola and looking on the MLS and I've hit up some realtors. And uh, I think we actually finally found the one that we're going to start on as a flip, but it came uh -huh. off of direct to seller marketing. And, you know, it's kind of that you can wait for people to bring you deals and 
maybe they come, or maybe in your instance, you know, you look at a hundred properties over a couple of years, or you can kind of yeah. go out and find them. And I've, I've always, I'd rather be in the driver's seat than in the passenger seat. I'm just, well, it's like I said, it worked for me in the past and, and that was good, uh, but it wasn't working anymore. Direct to marketing was the only way I was going to get some more properties right now. Everything selling in this Houston area is pretty much, I mean, a good deal is a one point 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 one point oh percent. Um, yeah. You know, Houston's hot. I mean, it's, you know, you're in Texas in a market that a lot of people are fleeing to. <laughs> right. <Yeah. now>. So, <laughs> right. I, I got, to, I got one question for you a little bit out of left field here and I hope you don't mind. Um, you, I'll, I'll use your words, not mine. You mentioned you're a little bit older and yes, going, going direct to seller requires a little bit of tech savviness, like, you know, using a CRM, e-signing contracts, that kind of stuff. How did, how did that go for you? Was that learning curve pretty steep? Like, I'm just, I'm just curious what that was like for you. Uh, no, I mean, I work for NASA, so we have a lot of, and I'm a software guy. Okay, cool. So you're fine. <laughs> for NASA. Just, just for so, <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't uh, much of a, a learning curve. Cool. Um, in closing, is there anything, you know, this was your first time ever going direct to seller. Was there anything you learned that like, you know, somebody who's in the position you were in, if they've never tried this and they're considering it, any advice you'd give them? Yeah. Um, direct to seller is, is much different than what I've done in the past. Uh, it was just that at this point in time, it's what was needed. Uh, advice to others. Um, it does work. It will require a little upfront money, uh, you know, to get your uh, marketing out in a little time. Uh, the phone will ring uh, and there will be opportunities and it's all about working your opportunities, uh, working the leads. And um, uh, this was the only thing that was working now. MLS, searching MLS for me right now is dead. I, I couldn't get anything out of that. It, yeah. That was going nowhere after a year and a half. I'm not a fan of bidding wars personally. I just don't find it super pleasurable. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sold now. Uh, after this, I, and I'm, I'm pumped for next year and let's go get a couple more deals this way. So this, this property you bought for $250,000, what do you think it would appraise for? Uh, well over 300. So, you, so realistically going direct to seller, you got in excess of a $50,000 discount plus seller financing? Yes, yes, plus the seller financing, right. Yeah, you're, you're not gonna get that deal on a property that's been maintained that well on the market, probably anywhere in 2020. Uh, I agree, and uh, it's funny you mentioned that, right next door they built a duplex that has less square footage, and it was uh, like 250,000 for less square footage. So even on a square footage wise, yeah, I would say north of 300,000. That's awesome. Very cool. No, this was super helpful, Todd. I think, uh, I think people will enjoy it. Um, you know, it's, it's neat because this wasn't your typical, just a cash deal. And the other thing I, I, I appreciate you doing this interview and being so honest about with it is I think a lot of people focus on like the, how to get a deal if you don't have any money or how to do a deal with no money down not the position you found yourself in and I found myself in of like, I'm earning, you know, sub 1% interest on something that's in savings that just doesn't make any sense. I'm not even outpacing inflation. Yes. Very, very cool. Um, so Todd, I'll, anybody I'll who, add, Go ahead. I'll just add one thing. Uh, I've done this a little bit over time and uh, working with uh, NASA, watch my 401k rise and watch my uh, real estate investment rise over time and my real estate investment pretty much outpaces my uh, 401k and so it's always going to be a, a part of me and i will always continue investing in real estate very cool yeah i've i've noticed the same thing uh i, I don't I've, I've just got an ira i max out every year for the tax benefits yeah but, you know i'll look at it and it's like on twenty thousand dollars 
uh, that I've kicked in over a couple of years, I've made 2000 bucks. And it's like, right. I know if I'd taken that cash and thrown it into direct to seller marketing, I'd be way right. ahead. Than You'd be than way that. ahead of that. Correct. <laughs> uh, so folks that want to reach out to you, kind of chat, uh, maybe folks in your market, best to just look you up on Facebook. Yes. Facebook, Instagram, uh, it's, and it's rocketparkproperties.com. I mean, well, Rocket Park Properties, rather. Okay. And it's uh, Todd, T-O-D-D-G-A-S-P-A-R-D, correct? Correct. Todd Perfect. Gaspard. Awesome. Sweet. I think that's good. So Todd said I couldn't call him an astronaut, but as he put it, he's been in lots of NASA aircraft and is friends with lots of astronauts. I don't know what your day job is, but... It's really kind of one of those things like he mentioned in this interview, his real estate portfolio is outpours, outpacing his 401k. So whether you're doing this for your retirement or cash flow, there's absolutely value in going direct to seller even when you have a day job. Be sure to like and subscribe. Of course, tell your friends. We'll talk to you next time.